Uh, super excited for our guest today, Patrick Wicklander, a uh, a pitcher in the Rays organization. How's it going, man? It's going pretty good. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing well. Can't complain. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties before we started this, but uh, <laughs> glad we're finally able to get going. And uh, it's, it's about time. I feel like it's been a couple of months since I've been kind of chatting with you and stuff on like TikTok and uh, finally able to get you on the pod, man, a fellow Bay Area guy, too. Yeah, I mean, I see all your clips all over TikTok, and like, I ruined with Reifert last year in Bowling okay. Green. So, <clears throat> all so right, so yeah. then we got we got to start with that. Then, I mean, uh, what kind of roommate is Reifert? Because we talked to his uh, old roommate, uh, Kobe White, last last time we were on the pod. So, uh, right. <laughs> give us some wow. good. <laughs> I mean, Reifert and I are good buddies. Like, yeah, um, he showed up in Asheville last year on the road. And then he goes, yeah, I'm rooming with you. I was like, all right, cool. So then we get back. Very simple guy, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he got the same order every time from this little bakery. And he got back, hopped on PlayStation, just played MLB yep. the show. Yep. And he, you can tell he's still like the little kid at heart. And it's, it's really cool. He's a really good, really good dude. And Colby White, dude. Let me, that's, <laughs> that's a great dude. Yeah, no, he's cool people, and he, I think he's finally throwing again, too. So it's good to see him back I in think, action. I think he is. Yeah, I mean, like I, I've had uh, – I kind of joke around saying I might be like, you know, call me locked on Rays for a little bit because uh, I had so many different Rays guests on the pod and a couple of different of them follow me and stuff. But uh, let's, let's talk about you and your story. Like, how does your baseball story begin? Like, when did you start playing baseball and kind of get us to – kind of walk us through your baseball uh, – your b- baseball background? So what got me into baseball, believe it or not, was a pair of football cleats. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I was like four or five. I wanted them because they had like the sharks on the side. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys remember Sports Authority, but that's where they were at. And my grandma was like, all right. she didn't know they were football cleats. She just saw the spikes on the bottom and thought they were baseball. So nice. she was she was saying like, I won't get them for you unless you play baseball. So I said, okay. And that's just kind of how it started because I was yeah. just like, my first sport was soccer. And, like, I grew up playing both up until eighth grade was my last year of soccer, and that's when baseball really took over for me. But, I mean, I played as much baseball as possible. Like, I joke around with my dad whenever I talk to him, like, dude, I played way too much baseball. <laughs> I repeat, a sports authority. Do they close down <laughs> everywhere? Or is it was that just here? I think that was in Cal- – like, in California, I know they closed down. Oh, yeah. But after that, I, I didn't see another one, so I was like – Yeah, so I guess no Dick's more in Florida up- either. No, I was like, I think Dix is taking over now, or Academy. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, like, Big Five? That was, like, the thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> Big Five was huge. I was like, every time we w- we went to this little sushi restaurant in Morgan Hill, yeah. and there was, like, a Big Five right next door. And so, like, we always went a little earlier because, like, me and my dad always walked around. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, this is cool. This is cool. Oh, all these gloves suck. <laughs> Dude, I used to my, – my, dad, my dad's so random. Like, he would go there for his shoes, and I'm like – Dude, you know there's so many other places you can buy shoes, but he's like, no, man, they got the shoes that I want at at, at Big Five, and that was like, like you couldn't change his mind. I think I top you on that one. My dad always got his shoes at Ross. <laughs> that's that's where I got my shoes. <laughs> that's where I got most of my cleats growing up because like I always had a bigger foot, and my dad was like, if you want to keep growing, I ain't spending 150 dollars on a pair of cleats. I was like, all right, good point. <laughs> Ross was my first. My first uh, real job was at a Ross in uh, in El Cerrito. Oh jeez, oh jeez. Yeah, like it was the worst. I I worked there for maybe like two months. It was probably the worst experience I've ever had. My <laughs> first day on the job, I think I lost the company like sixty bucks. Like they didn't even teach me. They just threw me at the register and like, hey, start working. And there's lines. You know, Ross is like nonstop lines. At yeah. the end of the night, they're checking and counting the register. They're like, dude, you're short like sixty bucks. I'm like. Y'all didn't teach me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm flying. I'm, I see my pants here. I'm just, I'm swinging it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you, you grew up in San Jose and stuff like that. Um, La Vic. Have you had that? Oh, yeah. So I went to Valley Christian. Yeah. And there was a La Vic right down the road. And so senior year, um, I had like an off period right after lunch. Mm-hmm. So I go, uh, lunch would happen. I go off campus, go work out. <clears throat> and before I come back, I always stop at La Vic. The only, the only damn part about it was that they were cash only. Yeah. So there's times where like, I'm driving by and I'm like, damn, I don't have any cash. Yeah. 
So like every now and then I ask my bomber dad for like 10 bucks in the morning before I, get, <laughs> before I leave for school. I was like, Hey, can I get 10 bucks? I'm like for what? I'm like, love it. They're like, what the hell is that? I was like, the, you just gotta try. Best, you just gotta try. It. The well, best it? breakfast brie. Oh, it's a Mexican restaurant, but it had like yeah, okay. the best. It's like a hole in the wall. So one, <clears throat> one's in a, like a little house they converted <laughs> into like a a store. Is that the one that you would go to? Uh, I would go to the one towards like the drive-ins on Monterey. Yeah. Okay, and okay. it's like literally you you can't you like there's no drive-through. You have to walk up and order it. They make some. Like the burritos are huge. Like you're not getting like it's like a double Chipotle burrito for like yeah. a, qu- a quarter of the price. Yep, and that's and it's sauce. Like, it's like fresh shrimp, fresh avocado, rice, sour cream. I'm like, dude, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ain't got yeah, nothing like that around that. here. Yeah, I was gonna say they don't got that here in Wisconsin either, man. I I was just in California a couple months ago and I, I loaded up on all the Mexican food I could. Man, they don't got that out here like like they do in California for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, whenever I go back home, it's always Togo's. I love oh, Togo's. Yes. Dude, I, I never know. noticed. Do they have Togo's in Florida, Lane? No, I've never. Dude. That's why. I, I was like, I'm a big food guy. So, like, now I just want to go eat. No, like, no, like when you, Togo's, it's like, it's like three times the size of like a Jimmy John sandwich. It's like Firehouse, yeah, like but that. cheaper with yeah. more options. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, like, did you ever go to <clears throat> Premier Pizza in Santa Clara? Premier Pizza? Yeah, no, this I was a big high pizza I've ever had. I was a big high five guy. Man, okay, so, yeah, the, like the Silver Creek Sportsplex. I like grew up there. Yeah, but and that was actually my first job too, like first ever job working in high school. <laughs> They're like, "Hey, you're gonna go man the bouncy houses in the back." I said, "All right, cool." <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So obviously, you talk about your high school career and stuff. Um, you were one of the top. I think the fifth ranked left-hander in in California. How was it pitching in California? Because there's so much talent coming out of that state. Um, it was it was great, honestly. I mean, I grew up playing like I grew up playing with and against Spencer Torkelson. Uh, yeah, like him and I are buddies. Like we we'll yeah. still touch every now and then. Um, I played against Nick Madrigal, Dylan Carlson, Hunter Bishop, Chris wow. Bubik. Me and Bubik are actually buddies. Um. <clears throat> trying to think like sean dunson jr came back one year i think it was my senior year he came back to bp and he's just putting balls out right center of valley i'm like dude what <laughs> like, i'm just struggling to hit ball 300 feet over the wall yeah. in the field and he's over here just putting balls out oppo no big deal i'm like all right cool <laughs> That's but um, i mean just the talent overall it's like it's incredible um pd hopland played at st francis Oh, dude, my senior year, he he was a freshman, and like some se- we we're playing in the W Cal fi- semis at Santa Clara, and he walks up. I throw I throw a heater just just off the dish, and he um, umpire calls it a strike, and he's mad, like he is beyond pissed. And so I look at our catcher before our catcher even goes anything. I signal, here's a fastball, same spot, he strike two, <laughs> doesn't swing. So I'm like, all right. Here we're going. We're doing it again. I signal it. This is like in the second inning too. And I just throw, and he swings and misses, and he looks at me, and, I'm, and I just go palms up, like, "He's going to call it. I'm going to take it." <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do in that situation? But just keep going at it. Literally, that, like that was the fun part about Cal, like, I, like California, like high school ball is like everyone kind of knew each other, yeah. so it's like you always have those games within the game. Yeah, it's kind of. Florida's pretty talented too, but California's ridiculous. No, I mean, she's like Florida. Like, don't you like spring training is in Florida? Like, we were in Port Charlotte. Oh yeah. But then the last year we were in Sarasota because the hurricane totally like torched yeah. our complex, like torched yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, we didn't get hit too bad over here. I mean, it was bad, but not. It, it, it's hard to judge when you live here for twenty four years and uh, yeah. I see like twenty of them. It's like, yeah, that one was. <laughs> Kind of weak, but it screwed us up. Yeah, no, we were yeah we were in Orlando. I'm like, what? This is weird. Like being around like a lot of people because Port Charlotte, there's like very, there's like a small yeah. amount of people, but in Orlando, you got tourists, you got all these little kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is a lot. <laughs> Orlando is terrible. I, I avoided it <laughs> at all costs. Tough place for them to send you. 
you got all them places right there by Port Charlotte, and they go all the way to Orlando. But our complex league team is not is sharing the Orioles facility in Sarasota. Oh, that place is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drove down to uh, Tropicana Field to watch the game there. Uh, went to go see uh, Ryford. Actually, he he was in pitching, but saw him. Uh, Andrew Gross. He was in there. He got to play a couple mm-hmm. or pitch a couple innings. Um, went out to eat with him and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, man, like the whole trip. I, I that was my first spring training game. And uh, it's funny because I was at the uh, Rays game and uh, Rays uh, spring training for the minor leaguers, and there was all these dudes with like the autograph guys, mm-hmm. <laughs> like just binders and binders of like these autographs, and like I can just hear them talking, and they're like tell- telling each other, like, "Oh man, you haven't really, you haven't done it right until you ask the wrong, ask the guy for his name, and it turns out he's a- the wrong person or whatever." You know, like oh, it's just God. like the dumbest yeah. thing. Like they're out there just, con- they're just free balling it. Yeah, no, so in Bowling Green this year, like, <clears throat> there's J.J. Goss and Carson Williams on the roster, too. Yeah. We, like, th- those autograph guys, we call them card sharks because they get yeah. cards. You're like, how the hell do you guys have these already? Yeah. yeah. Like, they have my perfect game, like, uh, National Showcase card, like, that I never got. I'm like, I don't even have these cards. <laughs> but, like, for the last month leading up until I got called up, they're like, J.J., J.J. I'm like, I not J.J., and I'm like, I'm asking guys, like, do I look like JJ? They're yeah. like, no. <laughs> yeah. Usually it's never the same even features. No, like, I mean, then I was roommates with Menendez. Like, Menendez and I are good buddies. Yes, my boy. And uh, he was telling me the story about him in the fall league with him. And, like, people thought he was Jason Dominguez. I was like, <laughs> that's, like, no. Like, that's not it. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying too hard at that point. Yeah. You know, he's he's cool people. He's been on the pod, too. Uh, he, he showed out in the fall league as well. Yeah, he's doing well. I mean, I, talk, yeah. I keep up with him a little bit. Yeah. he uh, He's telling me the story um, about how he, in uh, in college, um, he got on SportsCenter because he, like, sl- he, like, chugged a water bottle, threw it down, and, like, bounced perfectly into the garbage can. And it was, like, on ESPN highlights and stuff like that. And he said that was, like, his little famous moment. Yeah, like in 21, we got drafted, and like he was telling us that story. We're like, no shot you do that. And then he goes, yeah. and he showed us the ESPN's like sports center. And I was like, dude, that was you? And we're like, yeah. he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was on Barstool Sports. He was on ESPN. And then he was like, I got like three followers out of it. So he's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's tough. <laughs> he said he got no, he said he got millions of views. He got like no followers out of the thing. I'm like, dude, you got screwed over, man. It's, that's, that's rough. Tough. That's rough. Yeah, but yeah, a ton of good people in the Rays work. But uh, let's go back into your 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 uh, baseball career and stuff. Like, obviously, you get you go to um, Arkansas, but why not the Bay Area? Why not Cal, Stanford, uh, San Jose? Like all the California colleges, were they not reaching out to you? Um, San Jose didn't really reach out to me, believe it or not. Um, when the whole recruiting process started, my dad asked me, he goes, "Why why not Stanford?" And I'm like quite honest with you, dude, do you think I could keep up academically at Stanford? Those grades are, man, they're and, he, and he's like, you got a point there. Like, my <laughs> point exactly. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't care. It's like, well, I, my freshman year, I was I was in talks really deep with UCLA. Okay. Like, TJ Bruce, love the guy. He's the hitting coach at TCU now. Um, But then he left, new guy came in, and then all communication was cut. I was like, okay. Then I wanted to go, like, I wanted to go look at TCU. Mm-hmm. So then, um, what was it? I think it was like my sophomore year before I go out to Jupiter. And uh, I go out to TCU with one of my buddies. And my now agent was like, hey, come check out Dallas Baptist after. Mm-hmm. So we're like, oh, never heard of this school. Okay, why not? And then, like, the pitching coach was there and, like, we got to talk to him and everything. And like the pitching coach is Wes Johnson was Wes Johnson at the time. He's now the head coach at Georgia. So I was like, I told my dad after we left the campus at DBU, I was like, dude, I like this campus. Like, I like it a lot. I like the pitching coach. I like what they what they do with arms. Like they're competitive year in and year out. Because like growing up, I never had like a dream school. Like I didn't yeah. like I never wanted to follow my parents like as like alumni or something like that. It was just like I just wanted to go play the best of the best. So like SEC was like 
the top of the top for me, but like no SEC school is reaching out. So, um, <clears throat> I go out to Jupiter. I have like the game of my life against like Florida travel ball. Yeah, I throw I throw a no hitter against them, and I, like I think I topped like ninety three or something like that. And Wes Johnson calls me, and goes, "Hey, we want to offer you," and I'm like, "Okay." And so I like I was like, "Let me talk to my parents about it," and then like, I'll get back to you. He goes, "Okay, okay." So I talked to my parents that night. I called them back and said, "Hey, I'm, I won't going to com- commit to you guys." All right, cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so, he, like, everyone's excited, this and that. But then uh, he leaves, I think, my junior year. And I'm like, okay, I'm not really sure, like, what to do, really. So then junior year goes around. A senior year rolls around. Wes Johnson is at Arkansas. And he calls me. He goes, hey, do you you want to be a hog? I'm like, all right, I got two questions. Like, one, like, am I able to get in? And two, like, will I... Like, is there, do you guys have like scholarship money left? Like, it's going to be tough for me just to, like walk on. He goes, "Give me five minutes." Five minutes later, he calls back. He goes, "Yes to both." So I'm like, <laughs> "All right." I'm like, "I'm like, coach. All right." Sound. I said, "Let me talk to let me talk to my parents." <laughs> talk to my parents. A few days go by. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll commit to y'all." Like, I was like the second to last player to commit in our class. And so, like, that's how I, I committed without seeing the campus. Like, I didn't know much about Arkansas at all, believe it or not. Like, I bar- like that year I found out Andrew Benintendi came from Arkansas and Dallas Kaiko came from Arkansas. Like, I barely knew any of that. But then I go on my official and I'm like, Fayetteville's freaking crazy. Like, this is nuts. And, like, I just, I just fell in love with it ever since. Like, I spent my last two off seasons there working out. And it was just, it was just like – one of the best baseball experiences you can have. So, obviously, you're from the West, and then you go straight to the South. I mean, it's a completely different dynamic. <laughs> How was the switch up there? It wasn't as bad as people, like, assume. Yeah. Because for me, it's like, I in high school, I talked to everybody. Like, I was I was friends with, like, the, the nerds, as you could say, the band people, yeah. the band geeks, the athletes. Like, I, did, I hung out with them all. So, like, going to college, it was just, like, the the dynamic and everything. I mean, I just I just fit right in. Yeah. So, uh, I always hear SEC ball is, is nothing like it. I'm a big SEC fan because down here in Florida, obviously. So, mm-hmm. um, being that you played in the SEC and obviously you play out of conference games, is it the superior college baseball conference? Oh, without, without a doubt. Like – like you see like University of Southern Miss in Tennessee. Yeah. Like you see that and you're like, Tennessee hands down should just go like, like Southern Miss. I like should go O2 barbecue, but no, it's like Tennessee is just like, they're kind of hurting themselves a little bit. Yeah. And then, and then like as fun as like the Oral Roberts and Oregon, and Oregon super is to watch. Like that's like that's fun baseball to watch, but it's like there's nothing better than watching like Ole Miss and Mississippi State duke it out. Yeah. Like, because I've been on that side of the regional in nineteen when this it was us and Ole Miss and in our super the scores were outrageous. The first game was like sixteen to two, then they beat us fifteen to four, and then the third game it was like sixteen to five or something like that. And I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, this is nuts. <laughs> That's what I hear is SEC balls. That's where it's at. I mean, watching it, you can see it. You can see the difference, but. It's like just, just... It, it's just, you got a big leaguer every night. Like, yeah. in, in 19, like, like we faced Garrett Crochet, who didn't throw a pitch below 97 until yeah. the se- till the seventh inning. Yeah. In 21, our suit, in, our, in 21, our regional, we had Nick Lodolo and Andrew yeah. Vaughn. Over at Cal, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Cal. And like Lodolo throws a two seam up and into Kerstad, and Kerstad makes it like, or no, was it was it was it nineteen? No, yeah, it was twenty one. No, no, oh, my bad. It was nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, because Lodolo throws a two seam up and in. Kerstad takes a like a bad swing, like the worst swing I've ever seen him take. 
and it was just 97. And I'm just like, that's a big leaguer. Yeah. Like, that's a damn big leaguer out there. <laughs> and now look at him. I'm like, well, all right, boys, let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> Who was uh? What was the, your favorite team to pitch against? Maybe uh, the fans were a little extra cocky, um, a little a couple extra chirps from the fans and all that, and you just couldn't wait to shove against them. Mississippi State. <laughs> I, a funny, a funny story about that. In twenty one, like great fan base, great stadium, great environment, nothing but love and respect for them. But in so like in twenty one, before all my starts, like I'd go out and shag a little bit, you know, just kind of move around. And there's some fans in right center field. They're like. Are you you Wicklander? I was like, yeah. They're like, good luck tonight. You ain't going to last more than an inning against us. It's like, I'll see you boys out here tomorrow. I go out, I throw like five five innings, one run ball. We ended up winning like four to one or something like that. And the next day I'm out there, I'm like, what do you guys got for me? And they're like, all right, you you, you kind of shoved it against us. It's like, <laughs> it's like I appreciate it. They're like. Do you want a hamburger or a hot dog? <laughs> like nothing but great fans at Mississippi State. Like you guys see what they do for like other yeah, for yeah. other teams when they come in. Like great environment, great team. Like nothing but love for like the maroon and white. Nothing but love for them. Um, I was about to ask you. Uh, I don't know if you saw. Obviously, you probably did see if you in the media at all. The uh, Quinn Matthews for Fanford that threw 156 last night. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> People got their own opinions on it, but being that you've made the World Series run, you've made the Omaha run, you've done it with these guys, that you've been grinding it out all year long. Like, this is what kids go to school to do. Like, that's why people yeah. do that. So people turn down draft day offers out of high school to go do this stuff. It obviously means more. So what are your thoughts on it? I get both sides of it. Yeah. Because, um, believe it or not, like, a bunch of my buddies are at Stanford too. But at the end of the day, it's like, I get what you're trying to do. I get the, but also the situation didn't necessarily call for it. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. 16 punch outs against a, a big 12 team in Texas. Like, all right, cool. Like I would want, like, don't get me wrong. If I'm in issues, yo, coach, don't pull the rock for me. Yeah. Like, but also at the end of the day, you're up five runs yeah. in, the ni- in the ninth. Like that's, Already at 136 going into it, plus sure. however many other pitches he's thrown, like his other appearance. Because I saw like I saw like all the pitches added up, and I'm like, I think it was so 353 crazy. in nine days or or five days or something like that, or something dumb like, like that. Like big leaguers don't even do that. No, I mean in the regional he threw 117, and two days later came back and threw like 64. Jeez. And then he said he's ready to go again if they need him. Yeah. Oh my god! I mean, hey, everyone has their own thing, but I don't know about going again. But I mean, 156. Do what you got to do. But I don't know about two days in a row. That's that. Yeah, two days. I was like, dude, two days in a row, like 156. Like, good luck lifting your arm tomorrow, bud. I, I mean, maybe you throw 85 and come back and throw 20 more. Maybe. But yeah, different, uh, different different story. Like I did that in 21 and 21. I went out through six six innings, and then Hobbs comes to me and goes, hey. Do we, you going to be ready by Sunday if we need you. So yeah, just let me know and I'll be ready. And I yeah. come out and throw nine nine more pitches. I was like, okay. I think I remember that. Yeah, like that's fine. But I was like, I saw like all the numbers added up. Then you had the warm up pitches. You had it in between innings. Yeah. I'm like, dude, like, kudos to lot. you for your. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't think I've ever thrown that much in a game. Jeez, what was your uh, your favorite your favorite college environment or favorite college moment um, that you had in your time in uh, in our, at Arkansas? Um, I would say coolest moment would be going to Omaha my freshman year. Like that's like everyone's dream, hands down. Like I'm lucky enough to experience it my freshman year. I would say the coolest moment would be the Charlie Welch home run in the regionals in 21 against Nebraska. Um, that like I was in the bullpen with Nolan because our pitching coach Hawes was like, Hey, like, go down if we need you. We need you. It's like, Okay, I'm down there with Nolan. Uh, the guy throws a pass ball. We're like, Oh my god, are we actually about to do this? Next pitch, Welch hits it. We look up, place just erupts. I can't, like, I am less than two feet away from Connor on the bit on like the 
in the bullpen, I'm like, I can't hear you. <laughs> like that is hands down probably one of the coolest experiences like I've ever been a part of. Like even former like Hogs players that like played a while ago, they're like, that was the loudest I've ever heard Bob Walker. And they that's coming from guys who were on the same team with James McCann hit the walk off against LSU. Arkansas shows out for baseball from what I've seen. Dude, the re- the Super in 21, <clears throat> like we won the regional, and the way the stadium sets up, it's like you have the hog pen in left field, the gates are over there, and then you have the gates that go all the way around. And like the, There's a restaurant in right field, like past right field. We won the regional. People were setting up all the way past the restaurant for the Super the next week. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, Wow. <laughs> You won't get that in the Pac-12. No, you won't. Yeah. You're like what you see at Stanford is the most they've probably gone in three years. Yeah, yeah. How was it being uh, tweeted at by uh, the pitching ninja when you were in college? That was dope. Like, because that was when, like, that was when, like, he was so like on the like, up and coming, and he was yeah. like trending upwards really quick. And that was like that was my best pitching performance at Arkansas. Believe it or not, eleven punches against Florida. And it was like on my fourth best pitch too. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, this is kind of cool. Like this yeah. is really cool. Do you ever uh, pitch it now or even since then? You're like, man, you throw a pitch you're like, yeah, this is going to end up on Pitching Ninja. Uh, 